This is an egg cup. It's very simple. It's made out of stainless steel and costs about five rand or half a dollar. But what if this little guy had dreams of being more than just a simple kitchen utensil? What if this egg cup could save the lives of countless people? I'm not going to give you a lecture on a crazy new diet, getting people to eat more eggs in the morning. I'm sure there's got numerous health benefits, but my idea is a bit more bizarre than that. What about using this egg cup to diagnose people with heart disease? My aunt, Sue, who lives in Johannesburg now, had open heart surgery last year. Because of her heart condition, she's had two previous open heart surgeries, one when she was only 26 years old, and before she had her daughter, she had five miscarriages. This wasn't due to congenital disease or an unhealthy lifestyle. This is all to, due to an infection she got when she was 14 and growing up in Zimbabwe or Rhodesia at the time. And the thing I find most sad about my aunt's heart condition is it could have been completely uh, avoided if she'd just been diagnosed early and given simple antibiotics. You may be wondering what simple infection leads to such major heart complications when you're older. My aunt's got something called rheumatic heart disease, which you may not have heard of, but you've probably heard of strep throat, that infection you get when you're a kid where you get a bit of a sore throat, but you get some antibiotics and you're fine. But if strep throat isn't treated, it can lead to a serious fever and spread to other parts of your body, like your joints and your skin, and importantly, your heart, where it leads to damage of the valves within your heart, which control the flow of blood. In most cases, this leads to the need for heart surgery when you're older. Rheumatic heart disease has been descri described as a disease of the poor because it's most prevalent in the developing areas of Africa and indigenous populations of Australia and New Zealand. There are more heart surgeries every year in Africa due to rheumatic heart disease than any other condition and leads to the death of a thousand people every single day. To put that into perspective of other conditions, something like malaria kills 1,700. But there is some good news. Heart surgery due to rheumatic heart disease is completely preventable. If kids at an early stage of having a condition are detected early enough, they get simple penicillin in the form of monthly injections, which have been shown to be cost-effective. And this stops them progressing the disease progressing and them needing heart surgery when they're older. Now that's amazing. Simple penicillin stops the need for heart surgery when you're older. Diagnosis of these kids is normally done by a doctor, either using a stethoscope, which is that instrument you use to listen to the heart, or something called echocardiography, which is a fairly complicated instrument used to image the heart, see what it looks like. But this requires two important things. Firstly, a doctor, and secondly, expensive medical equipment, both of which aren't readily available in the areas where rheumatic heart disease is most prevalent. Now, this is really important because it means that those kids at the highest risk of having rheumatic heart disease have the lowest likelihood of being diagnosed. And this lack of diagnosis is something that I want to change, and this is where that egg cup, that simple egg cup, comes back into the story. I've told you that rheumatic heart disease leads to valve damage, and this valve damage in the heart leads to abnormal sounds or murmurs uh, in the heart cycle. And these murmurs can be picked up or heard using a stethoscope. So my idea is to use an egg cup as a stethoscope. Plug into a mobile phone which runs software on an app that can automatically pick up these murmurs that are indicative of rheumatic heart disease. This is my, my PhD project, which I've been working on for uh, three years now. As I'm sure you can imagine, working on the same project for so long I means I'm pretty heavily invested in it. I think this, this area in which I study called biomedical engineering is a natural fit for me. Uh, I was the kind of kid that took about my toys with a screwdriver. If I wasn't doing that, I was reading kids' books on the human body and how that worked. Uh, I actually think my mom, who now you all know is sitting in the audience, uh, wanted me to become a medical doctor. Sorry, mom, it didn't quite work out. 
I think growing up in a country like South Africa has made me acutely aware of the discrepancies in the way people live and the inequality. And how something which I almost take for granted, like access to antibiotics, can be very easy for me, but almost impossible for someone growing up in the same country. I love this idea of making inaccessible medical treatment and diagnosis more accessible to people who need it desperately, using uh, prevalent but smart technology like mobile phones. So in the case of rheumatic heart disease, if I can use a simple egg cup and a mobile phone to find those most at risk, I can make sure they get the treatment which they desperately need. Now there are three main goals or objectives when designing a device like this. First is to keep it low cost. Secondly, make it easy to use. And thirdly, make sure it works accurately. So let me talk about low cost firstly. I think this term medical device conjures up images of high-tech, sophisticated, expensive equipment, but it doesn't need to be that way. Using something like an cup means that those who most need it can access this device. And on the idea of the mobile phone, it's not my idea that kids will be running around in formal settlements with their own smartphone and holding an egg cup to their chest every morning with breakfast to diagnose themselves for rheumatic heart disease. I understand that's pretty far-fetched. My idea is more there'll be someone in the community, someone like a teacher or community healthcare worker who has access to such a device and they can go around screening the kids in their area. That leads me to my next point of making this device easy to use. If I expect someone with limited medical training to use this device, it has to be really simple. And the best way to do that is to give feedback to the user on firstly, where to place this egg cup on the kid's chest, and secondly, as probably will happen in, when using an egg cup to record heart sounds, it's not gonna go very well all of the time. And in that case, give feedback to the user saying, that recording wasn't so good, try do this, and try do it again. So I have this low-cost device, which is easy to use. How do I make sure it's giving a correct diagnosis and works accurately? I have a, an app on my phone which I can hold up to a, a speaker in a noisy pub or restaurant, and by listening to the music, it can tell me the name of the song that's playing. That's pretty cool. If they can do that for songs, can I do it for heart sounds? I'm using something called machine learning, which is basic artificial intelligence to do this. And machine learning works by teaching a computer to tell the difference between two different things by training it on lots of examples. Machine learning is the way that your email knows the difference between those emails that are important and those that are spam. So basically, I'm trying to do what uh, machine learning has done for finding those emails you get from people you've never heard of asking for your bank account details and promise you millions of inheritance, but for kids with rheumatic heart disease. As I said, for machine learning and to make it work accurately, I need a bunch of examples. And I've got those. I've got recordings from 50 kids with rheumatic heart disease and 50 matched controls who are healthy on this device uh, from a clinical trial that's ongoing in Cape Town at the moment. I've got these with the help of two fantastic doctors who work at the University of Cape Town, Dr. Liesel Zulka and Professor Bogani Mayosi, who've been so helpful to me. And these recordings were done in a mobile clinic. Fantastic idea. It's a van they've converted into a clinic with a waiting area and, and screening beds, and it drives out to these informal settlements to screen the kids so they don't have to come all the way into the hospital in town to get these sounds recorded. Fantastic idea, awesome. Obviously, working on a project like this, I was about two and a half years into it at that stage, things don't always go to plan. Uh, what I didn't realize about this mobile clinic is that they've got medical equipment inside, as expected, and it needs electricity to run. And if they can't get close enough to a plug point, a power supply, they need to make their own electricity. You may be able to see where this is going. Uh, in order to make this electricity, they have to run a generator motor, which is mounted underneath the driver's seat of this van. I think one of the biggest lessons I've learned so far in my PhD is if you want to get high quality heart sound recordings and make your very easy to take murmurs to dramatic heart disease, don't run a generator motor in the background. <laughs> <laughs> it must have felt a lot like those guys uh, who organized that big football tournament here about four years ago, finding out there's gonna be vuvuzelas in the background of all the World Cup games. <laughs> but in a situation like this where I so desperately need this data to get this device to work accurately, you have to find a solution, find a way around it. Now you may have seen those headphones, they often sell at airports where you, those big, oh, quite expensive ones, you put them over your ears, and they cancel out the background noise in the airport or the airplane. Awesome. If they can do that for airplane noise, 
can I do the same for generator noise? And I can. I'm using the same noise cancelling ideas that those headphones use, but to make sure I get rid of this generator noise, I can accurately detect these hard sounds. Now we're going to have a bit of a quiz to see how good you guys are detecting murmurs due to rheumatic heart disease. Up here you can see two heart cycles, so one at the top, one at the bottom, showing the two classic sounds that the, the heart makes, lub and dub sounds. And in one of these uh, recordings, there's a murmur due to rheumatic heart disease. Can you see which one? I'll be completely honest. I've been looking at graphs like this for about three years now, and I can't tell the difference between those two. They look exactly the same to me. But I can tell you that the one at the top has got a murmur due to rheumatic heart disease. Just looking at these sounds by themselves doesn't give much information away. But if, using an engineering trick, I look a bit deeper and look at the frequency content, which is contained in these sounds, shown in red here, you'll see that the recording at the top has that high-frequency bump between the lub and dub sounds. Now, the high-frequency content there is a clear indicator of a murmur due to rheumatic heart disease. If I can teach you guys in 30 seconds to tell the difference between these two sounds, I can definitely teach a computer to do the same. And I think that is damn cool. <laughs> so I've got, this, I've got these recordings that I need to accurately diagnose this condition using smart software like this. It's made low cost and easy to use so that the people who most need it can get access to the device and diagnose these kids. And once they're diagnosed, they can be referred on for either clinical screening or treatment. This means that these kids who so desperately need this penicillin treatment can get it when they're young, before this disease progresses. So it stops them, just like my aunt needed when she was a kid growing up in the Barbie, stops them needing this heart surgery when they're older. But why stop at rheumatic heart disease? Using a stethoscope, there are obviously a bunch of different conditions I can detect. But why stop at heart conditions or even healthcare? I believe that mobile phones, because of their prevalence and sophistication but decreasing cost, have such potential to be used to help those in developing areas. Some examples other than remote doctor's diagnosis are things like mobile banking, which has already taken off in parts of Africa, but could be used for so much more, like mobile savings accounts or microloans. Things like just giving rural farmers uh, education on the best way to plant their crops or giving a child access to Wikipedia in school. This whole area of using technology for development has such potential in a range of areas like education, agriculture, healthcare, the environment. The area in which you work, how can you use such technology, low cost, accessible, yet uh, smart technology, to make an impact and to get your product or service to the people who most need it? Focus on low cost, uh, easy to use technology, focus on free and useful apps. And most of all, be crazy, combine things like kitchen utensils and a mobile phone to try to help people. And find an idea as simple as using an egg cup to listen to hard sounds. Thanks very much. <laughs>